Yeah. So, guys, at the beginning of yeah. your last session, you guys uh, grouped together and collected yourselves as you guys broke and entered into Grimwatch, making note of the verbal password that was needed to pass through the fireplace that uh, Sir Nicholas knew was the way to descend below the manor. Going back to the main entrance, they find six reapers looming the stairways to go upstairs, so it seems like it is an unavailable area to go and venture to. Todd specifically holds the door open to a family portrait room with a starry rug in the center of it. Todd never lets the door close, worried of some kind of trap inside. Everybody investigates some of the paintings to see uh, the extended family and some of the colleagues that... Uh, um, Victor Grimwatch had before Evan rolls up the rug and lights it on fire within the room. Yep. That was me. Uh, as that checks out, uh, Todd decides it is time to close the door and make their way through the, through the next one. It is here that they find themselves in a room that is completely upside down. A library, but on the ceiling of an upside down room they see a table with a book open as though as, as the party goes to investigate the rest of the library's um the library walls instantly evan sends his cat familiar cat bat familiar to go interact with the book once he has gotten the book the gravity of the room changes it goes into its uh, regular um straight up and down and everybody falls from the ceiling landing on the floor below there was a certain amount of sections within the table uh in front of them as the two sides of the library begin to close in on the party you guys solved the puzzle in a relatively decent amount of time stopping the walls from closing in on you guys learning the password to the the fireplace you guys decide to head straight over there and not explore anymore Going back through the family portrait room, you guys find yourselves in a close combat with five uh, spiritual being, no, four spiritual beings. It takes you guys a moment to take them out before going back into the main section room where there is a single reaper with a ton of dead bodies and blood as he raises more spirits out of the dead bodies that were not there before as you guys seem to get the jump on all of them. <laughs> super high on initiative and clearing them out before they get a chance to make a turn. X gonna give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What happens? You guys looked back up at the stairway <laughs> and saw as you slain one of the reapers, the same reaper comes from the top side back in order on the stairway. You guys make yourself you guys make your way back into the dining room to find everything completely in order. The table was completely uh intact all the chairs weren't flipped the painting wasn't taken off the wall until you guys re-entered and destroyed to re-initiate the havoc i mean yeah ah. stating the password to the fireplace put out the fire as a winding tunnel led to a elevator held together by one lever you guys all stepped into the elevator as you guys pulled the lever, slowly the cage in front of you closed and it started to descend into darkness. As the, the elevator started to descend further into the ground, there was glitters of purple and green engaged, like engaged throughout the, the way down. The little rocks of corium seemed to light the way. As you guys are descending, that is where we are. It was perfect timing. My defeat was right as the, you finished your Oh. Intro. Sorry, Worked not out. sorry to hear that. What? No. Because of the defeat? Trust me, it happens a lot more than I care. <laughs> but he never gives up. That's what's you know, important. actually, my friend called yeah. me out the other day. He's like, Ron, that's the one thing I'll say. You will sit there and just keep playing something until you figure it out. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. It's like, yeah, that's actually me. <laughs> but for real, though, yes. <laughs> mm 
But yeah, you guys are descending through this long tunnel through the elevator. So, what do you think is going to be at the bottom when we get there? No real way of knowing. But probably dead things. Probably dead things. Or things that are soon to be dead. That's that's what I was going to say. There's always dead things around us, it seems, because uh, if they try us, they tend to die. Well, uh, in the meantime, we got some time, it looks like, to kill. Uh, Clearly, this is going not as fast as I would make it, but, you know, safety measures are what they are, I guess, around here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up this book and look into it and start wondering if uh, Victor's little nonsense might give us insight into what we might get ourselves into. Okay. Hold on. Let me pull up the chapters. And then, I'm, is there a table of context, like contents? Of each of, like, that's basically, like, it. there's the chapters. Like the chapters, and the chapters. but are the chapters there listed? I, I have them right here in front of me. No, I'm asking in the book itself. When I open up the book, do I see a list of all the chapters? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was just wondering, like, get to the chapter and then it says it or not. Chapter okay. one was the uh, the first thing that you guys read. It was like I excluded chapter one because you guys have already read it before. How dark is the tunnel? Uh, is like I said, up? there's there's glints of uh, the corium as you guys pass by. It's okay. it's the way that it lights the path. Well, then let's go ahead and read Eyes in the Dark. Eyes in the Dark, chapter two. Those tunnels could drive a raved lunatic into madness by their maze-like design, as if those who entered were meant to get lost or passively hunted. Foul beasts have no resemblance to anything that I've seen or come screeching out from beyond the dark. Striking them down was easy in their deprived states. What led them down here? Or why are they trying to come up? To the surface? Back to the depths for more answers. What do you think they're talking about? These creatures. I don't know. Mm. As pompous as this general guy is, I'm sure he could be talking about any of non-human species as well. Oh well. I just, uh, maybe we are reading a little into it. Who knows what kind of madness this guy's trying to portray. Chapter three, if we got time. Chapter three, gemstone. A new discovery was made. A brilliant gem glimmering with purple and green. I've never come in contact with something such as this. What properties must it hold? It brings new meaning to energy, use in storage and creation. Yielding such gems could in turn power a house, a city, or even a continent. I must search for more. Strongly it does glimmer, and it is, and its polished shine feels like it is not myself looking in its reflection. Core, core source. Rium, reactive to change. Corium, this is this shall be its property name, the name for its discovery. According to this, Victor is the one who discovered Corium. How old is that uh, journal? There's, there's, there, I'm assuming there's no date entries. There's no date. Wow. Does anybody have any good, like, does anybody have any good, like, history checks? Uh, Uh, To check, like, the the paper, maybe? Actually, can I do a history check to see if I knew when Corium was discovered? Because you came from a large town like that, but, uh, sure, you could give it a try. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's see here. 
believe I have a plus six. Let me confirm that. Plus seven, actually. Okay. <clears throat> 14. You knew that your grandfather, at least, or like the, the people who are more elderly in your town, knew that they were like part of the roadmaps to to learning about the core like learning about the source of its abilities and stuff but that was in the town that was like as if it was being discovered for the first time for you guys okay well i just goes to point out this victor gentleman seems to be a lot older than uh I may think he is. What a boomer. <laughs> I mean, that's actually quite scary. The one thing I'll say that my dad taught me is an older person knows their way around. If they're the type of person that's old and is constantly in fights, well, they made it to that age and they still got in the fights. Uh, so they probably know what they're doing. Don't don't underestimate people like that. But we're walking right so into it. Kind of weird. That's we're walking into it headlong. Yeah, it's a little scary, huh? I mean, am I the only one that's not worried? We're kind of on a roadway to a danger. I mean, considering I worry for our safety. How's that, Nicholas? Or <laughs> that was Roger. I was about to say Roger. Well, you guys want to continue? Let's keep reading. Read on. What else are we going to do? Peace. Commute. Read on, Victor. Chapter 4 Foul Beasts Commune. Malefic Malefic Maleficent creatures have started noticing my existence and no longer. Um, what? When you say Maleficent, do you mean like. Do you mean Malefic like from the movie or for the book? And no longer hunting me in the jerseys <laughs> within <laughs> the pit. <laughs> Perfect. A save of energy for myself and them. Small communities collect here with images of some divine creature, letters scribing of a language I have never come across. They only signal down, further, as if they know the way, or could the way. or could gain the trust of them. Do you know it? What is it that they desire? A purpose? Uh, Can't read his own handwriting. Maybe a pastor from the village could aid in this. A dear secret we must keep. From Maurice. Maurice. Do you think uh, we might have encountered what he's talking about here in our travels? Who knows? Huh. Who's Maurice? Oh, yeah. oh, that's I mean that's Miss Grimwatch, but like Evans, like oh, right. why do I care? Is that was that his mom, his wife? That was his wife, yeah. Okay. Oh, stop she, it! She looked old. <laughs> she looked old in the painting, right? Not really. Oh. For whatever reason, I thought of an old lady. She's old now. <laughs> like, not gonna lie, I completely thought of the mom from Futurama. Nah. <laughs> That's Miss Grimm watching my head. I don't think I'm gonna change that. The mom from Futurama. Without her uh, publicity cosmetics. Oh, no. <laughs> I 
mm-hmm. I thought that's who it was, but no. No. <laughs> it's canon in my heart. <laughs> Sorry, I planted that seed. It's fine. Okay. The foul beast. I think he's talking about the rats. Probably. I mean, they're pretty foul. Good. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty probably confident. talking about the rats. They eat their own yeah, shit and they swim in the sewers. No offense, Grumman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They like them, some of them sewer bananas. He's um, experimenting and using the rats, though. It's not the rattlings aren't exactly something that he views, and any sort of awe, wonder that he's writing the book. I mean, unless I'm interpreting that wrong. No, he could be very well be the one behind everything. The experimentation on the rats. Who knows? He might have even been the ones directing them to worship this lord of hunger he they might not even have known the name until he came around and told him told him about it lord of hunger probably you're breaking up couldn't hear a thing lord of hunger's probably a lie that he made up no i i believe the lord of hunger i mean good god did you see what happened to scooter oh god i mean didn't we, we fight the lord of hunger once already i don't want that yeah. to happen to me what's that's an over-roided rat on Thorium. Is, is that what the Lord of Hunger was? Yes. Oh, yeah, rat? Not my opinion. <laughs> the thing, I don't know. Al's shaking his head. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what they're calling it, but I'm thinking like that underground monster that's unfathomable to my thought right now because I have no clue what it looks like. Um... I think that's the true Lord of Hunger, in my opinion. Whatever that is. Mm-hmm. It could also be that Zealanthia is the Lord of Hunger. How so? Well, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, shit like that mm-hmm. in books always go by many names. I mean, that mm-hmm. ends. Well, it wants to eat a planet. How much hungrier can you get? Right. I mean, you that's, could get that's pretty, pretty hungry. damn hungry. I mean, if it's not called the Lord of Hunger, I'm going to call it the Lord of Hunger. Oh, I'm going to call it a cunt. Yeah, that's fair. Kind of cunt goes around eating planets. That's yeah. just, it's just not right. Yeah, fair. All, all in favor, say aye. I, 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 I don't know why I agreed to saying something like that, but sure. Um, what you said that how many chapters are available? We can just keep going through them if you'd like. Oh yeah, we're gonna continue after each chapter. Have a little dialogue. <laughs> That's yeah. good. A little, like that. little book club meeting. So you little wanna keep, You want to keep going in order? Of course. Why? It's like a story. Chapter 5. Hired Help. Far gone ideas of doing this alone became a nuisance. Travel, digging, and slaughtering the creatures. I placed a notice in Grimwatch to strong, stern, and willing accomplices, accomplices to help within the addition to the manor. The word got out. And those with calloused hands and tired eyes reached my door. With willingness across their faces in exchange for payment, this was no issue. For even those from Vox Hollow, the neighboring city of which I gave my brother, Jasper, the course of managing the city, his only orders were to allow freedom and maintain order. They hastily wished to get to work before even knowing the existence of the vileness or location I wished for them to work. Fine. As night fell and shovels in hand, we went down, 
Those tired eyes quickly turned to repulsed shock. The quick mutters of wanting to work swept from their tongues. Many found new homes down there in the dark, chewed up, and the remains placed with the piles of bones. Only those with courage and vigor could aid in that fateful night down in the depths, until the glistening, mesmerizing tunnel, Corium, littered the walls in glimmer, felled only by a whimpering whisper, deeper in the depths. And so we all went. Well, they definitely went digging. Sounds like you tricked a bunch of peasants into getting killed. I mean, as you did. A bunch of really poor peasants. I think yeah. Casper people do different things for coin. Kind of mad. Yeah. <laughs> Begin to Brother this Victor guy even more and more the more I learn of him. Yeah, but at least you wanted Bob's Hollow to be like a free city, and that's the one thing Jasper didn't do. I mean, he also had the, the, the audacity to you know, appoint his own brother, the, the lord of the city. I mean, that's nepotism to the highest degree. Now, that's the real crime here. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's not that's nepotism if you call it a family yet. business. It's still nepotism. I mean, you can call it something nicer. Not saying it isn't, but you can call it something nicer. Well, you guys talk, you just let me know. Go for it. Yeah, we're, we're upset even thinking of the idea of Jasper. Chapter 6. You, none of us wants to really go on about him anymore. <laughs> Sent help. The night proved more promising than any study or unraveling mystery from ever before. Beyond, deep in the surface, has a mighty being, one greater than all manner of monster, dragon, devil, or god. This is the purpose of my life. Here is the discovery that will define uh, me among the sanctum of my colleagues. A letter will be drawn tonight and sent to those of the far reaches of the lands. Doa, a species observer. Zayax, old war hero. Kaleif, an archaeologist. Albus, a historian, Drax, another historian, Matthew, a religious follower, Canon, a mineral and engineer, a refinist, and Rifen, a residual magic teacher. I love how Alex has to stop sometimes and like trying to say for his own goddamn handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Sometimes it just be like that. <laughs> no. I just, just what the look, senior look, characters look, mean? I know. I was like, Nicholas. Did any of those names sound familiar to you at all? Of all people. Um, I'm gonna say no. I don't think Nicholas knew any of those people. Gertie knows two of them. Doa and Zayax are the Reapers of Vox Hollow. Those are the Reapers that we just killed? No, those are the ones that are in Vox Hollow, the one with the, the chains and the one with the scythe. And that's Yoa and who? Doa, D-O-H-A, and Zayax, X-A-C-E. Do you? I mean, is he turning people into reapers? Well, they had to come from somewhere, didn't they? Does that mean he has a limited supply of them? Well, 
Zobo and Zayax, uh, what were their jobs in the in the diary? What does it say their jobs originally were? One was one was a species observer, and one was an old war hero. But you know them to do anything Jasper tells them to do. If you remember that, he has two bodyguards, the two reapers. Yeah, we we remember that. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to make the connection in our stupid, stupid player brains. You don't think he made them into reapers, do you? I mean, why not? He's an asshole. It didn't have really to be him. It could have also one. been the um, giant of eating tentacle raid monster. Maybe if we keep reading, we'll find out. I mean, it sounds a bit like a serious necromancy situation, and I thought that was like urban myth. Do you really think people are able to just laugh at actually seeing that fucking town back there? Good God, how many dead people do you think he could be raising? Mm, a lot. Probably a lot. Like a, like a lot, a lot. Anthrax is just Roger, like... <laughs> Roger just shudders and he's like, I God, I hope not. Those things, and... they just... <laughs> they make my skin crawl. Everything is about and natural. Because I can't quite get to my... Uh, uh, voice, voice thingy, I'm just gonna say it. Uh, Anthrax is just gonna be all like, Oh, this is a man after my own undead heart. <laughs> <laughs> I really question a lot of things. I'm just going to say that out loud. Well, keep questioning. Yep. So let's see what happens when I get the answers. Chapter 7. You won't like them. <laughs> Preparations. Quick replies showed up at my doorstep and their arrival within the fortnight. Preparations must be made. Of course, my dear wife has become worried about my disappearances, and I must continue to keep the depths a secret. I must concern her with the visitors to come and the town's preparation. But for now, I will press down there again in the dark by myself to speak and claim some answers with this beast. All I know is it took those men that night and kindly allowed me to live within its allowance it wishes that i do its work among the surface communing knowledge of our kind and the new world that sits above the earth that lays upon it did it create the corium what is its purpose It sounds an awful lot like Victor is Zealanthia's bitch. Well, let's absolutely, see how this shit works. People get sucked in with the illusion of power, thinking that they might get a tip tidbit of it Ooh. of absolute power for themselves. Without realizing what they're getting themselves tied into. At least that's what I read in the stories in school. Let me tell you, boy. Nothing good comes from power if you don't want to achieve it. Roger nods and says, yeah, I'll second that. You don't get to kick people's asses if you don't earn it. You'll probably end up dead in the pursuit of power. Speaking <clears throat> from, uh, speaking from <laughs> personal Experience there? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, Awkward silence. <laughs> yeah, well, look at the consequences of your actions. Oh, I get to hang out with you guys. It's absolutely a fucking blast. Yep. Yep. That's More awkward silence. <laughs> mutually felt. 
<laughs> it's here but, that uh, you guys are going down the cavern here in the elevator before there's a large shake within the earth. You can see some of the debris moves off of the side and some of the dust falls from the the top of the, the elevator here. And down below, you can hear the skittering and screeching of some kind of creature down below. I'm just going to pull out my rifle and kind of just aim it at the ready. It's like, okay. Mm. The, um, that wasn't just me. No, I'm pretty oh, confident we're, we're we're going in hot. What, whatever's whatever's at the bottom of this elevator is probably gonna not gonna be friendly. We can still finish the rest of the journal if you'd like. Still time. I'm uh, saying you guys are just it, it's like you're making your way down. Okay. Oh god. Oh, we're nearing the end. Okay, I'm still gonna ready my weapon. Okay. Um, and make it bright with the light. Mm -hmm. Oh. Hmm. Light. So I'm going to continue holding my weapon ready at the aim, and I'm going to have my cat kind of hold the book in front of me so I can read it. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll continue to read it out loud. Chapter 8, Ascend. Glimmers of newfound knowledge, foundations of the Corium and the birthplace, the millennium this creature has been in the planet's core. Nothing will be the same after tonight. Zealanthia has released me from the trappings of my humanity, forgiving all that has to be of its birth, the follower, a leader in spreading of its word. Those must know the world will come anew, and down will come the age of this man who rages the surface. Enormous scriptures of magical capabilities were granted to me, calling and mm. is that written mm. correctly mm. the calling and execution of the monsters below became my servants i shouldn't flounder on this but press the limits before the visitation is to happen and then in the book there's a big cross like word burned into the paper and it says followers did did you scribe in my journal for all that is mine is now yours as is the steps i take for the air that i breathe the hell is this why does this stick out so different and i just circled my the word followers with my finger. It looks like it was almost written by someone else. I mean, and then he answers in the book like it's internal. I. Yeah, he's just fucking nuts. Yep. This is some hmm. kind of craziness here. I'm sure it makes sense to him because he's flipping insane. Mm-hmm. I mean... <laughs> what, what the hell is he making... What else could it have been? Like, what it, what what the hell would have wrote that in his book? I mean, let, let's just be real. Not just anyone could walk up into his own personal quarters and just fuck on this wizard's shit. It's just... I'm pretty sure he would stop them or know about it. Ooh. Is this wife? No, I think it's Zealanthia. Fucking with his mind. Breaking him. That's horrifying. This motherfucker seems like the type of person that would probably offer up his wife to Zealanthia. Turn him into a scooter. Turn her into a scooter. That's actually really and then that's going to be a horrible sight to see if that happened. Yeah. <laughs> well. But how much longer do you, does it look like we got on our elevator ride here? A little bit <laughs> longer. 
I guess we're on chapter nine. There was twelve chapters. Told you, man. I'm gonna read through the entire book if you let us. You got. I will. I'll let you. This is a really slow elevator. <laughs> it's. I mean, really it's pro- I, I like descent. to believe it's a long journey too. Mm. I'm playing elevator it, music. It, it's like the scene uh, in Resident Evil when they go down the train. Only mm. we don't have a train. We have this slow ass <laughs> elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Same distance, playing T-square. like half a city, you know, <laughs> span. <laughs> Just slow elevator. Then chapter nine, a new idea. The knights of chores trying to convince a few town folk of the new sanctum coming has not gone as planned, but no matter... Only after showing them the dig did they not only understand, but they wished not to live if this was true. They begged for death. Little did they know death was not to the end of them. Rituals of condemning them with disgusting results. How was I to create a following if even the most simple pilgrims couldn't understand the value? Gah! Following little vermin? Skaven of disease nibbled at my shoe before it had met the fate under my boot. What is this? A twitch? Those such an unremarkable... Uh, Hold on. They're unremarkable. Maybe the collective, almost conscious mind of the Skaven could grow to help. And the mindless became the following? Yes, we will develop a new species as our own clouded following. And doomed to make the name among... And the... Oh. And to make the doomed... How did I write this? (laughs) Yes, we will develop a new species as ours is clouded and doomed to make... Home among the headstones. Yeah. He's saying like his own species is clouded and won't learn. I mean, I just chalk it up as this guy's fucking mad, so it made sense to him when he wrote it. I mean, considering he teamed up with a bunch of rats. A bunch rats. of really, really dumb rats. I mean, he's got a, a squid god in his head, so... Squid God. Do you think that's real? I don't know. I, I don't see why it would not. It has tentacles, so it's like a squid, right? Fucking scary. Yeah, we saw the tentacle with your friend. Yeah, but... The thing that got Scooter... I mean... How much of it do you think was that? Like, that thing was big and that didn't seem like it was much. Mm. It's kind of insane. You, you don't you don't suppose that we're we're going closer to that thing right now, are we? I mean, Probably, I, I, yeah. 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 Absolutely, we are. That's that's actually a kind of a scary thought. I mean, you saw what it can do. Mm-hmm. Does that not bother any of you? Well, yeah, absolutely it does. somebody has to go find it. Fair. I mean, I'm here. What points exactly? But that still bothers the shit out of me. Yeah. It's it strange to think, but couldn't possibly be any worse than sitting there and letting it destroy the planet all on its own. If we at least fight, we know we've done that. Mm-hmm. We can cower, or we can fucking do something about it. Definitely. It's not really a choice in that case, you know, when you think of it that way. At least, If you, if you guys recall, you guys were on a rescue mission. <laughs> rescue oh, yeah. mission? That doesn't sound like us at all. I think we already rescued the person in the part of the party. 
the party continued on. Like, uh, okay, so we have actually just added a party member is what we've done. Yeah. That, that was our rescue mission. And now let's continue on. I mean, plus we were we were caught inside the mansion, so we had to figure a way out. And uh, somehow, some way, we didn't decide to take on all the Reapers. I'm I'm actually quite proud of us. <laughs> we we entered a room full of Reapers, and the Reapers looked like they wanted to fuck us up, and we took that personally. <laughs> well, we we did make an example of. It's friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They didn't really seem too shook by that. They might they just be out. I oh, mean, wait. they didn't attack us, did they? They, they, knew. they knew what would happen. <laughs> so, question. Total, how many people did he name for in the chapter where he was, he was saying he couldn't do it alone? And you mentioned the name of the two Reapers that we've already met that are in Jasper's way. How many others are there? Were there listed? There was a grand total number of eight. Okay. So Jasper has two, and how many have we killed? There are six Three? here. Not enough. There was six <laughs> at there were six at the manor. And how many did we kill? You killed kill. one. Three two total. down in in Grimwatch, and then you killed Go. one inside the manor. But as okay. you guys killed the one in the manor, you saw one come back out of the room. Okay, so we've killed three, and we know where two more are. And the one yeeted itself away from us. Yeah. So really, we just need to. So there are two other mystery ones that are likely being surrounded that are likely guards to Victor in the same way that. Jasper has two guards. I mean, that I seems mean, likely. Gertie, let's be real. They're already dead. Let's. What's not to say that as soon as we kill one, it just doesn't reappear in another room? Awesome. Especially since Victor seems to know how to bring dead things back. I mean, what's better than having a completely undead, die, like undying army? I mean, not clearly much, he's really not that. taking over everything because he only has possibly a limited amount, but still he can only do so much with them at one time in that sense, if that's the case. Yeah, so far, but how... I'd be interested to know how the Reapers were created initially because the only thing better than an undead army, army of brainless zombies is an undead army of Reapers. I don't think it's good for us to know how... <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Are you I saying think we... certain people here can't be trusted <laughs> with the process for making undead? Why is everyone oh, looking I at thought, me? I wasn't, I wasn't aware that you and your dad were standing there. Oh, you moved okay. since we started moving. Now it's awkward. It wasn't well, awkward and just... now it is. <laughs> Why are you guys, Why are you all looking at me now? Look at him. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> but on a serious note, I don't think uh, that's the type of knowledge that should be out and about in the world. What good could come of it? The ability. I mean, I mean, but you just said though that we don't know enough about the Reapers to know that if we kill it, does it stay dead? But if we know how they're created then that might give us a key to know what their longevity is and if Victor is capable of making more after we've killed these ones. Or we could uh, just bash him over the fucking head. Okay, but if <laughs> if that is a temporary kill and they just reappear in a different room or a different location, then we're just wasting time and resources. Exactly. Which, I mean, for Victor, it's a win-win. We waste time, spend resources, when clearly nothing fucking mattered. I mean, setting the rug on fire, what did that do? I mean, made me happy for about 15 seconds, not gonna lie. You know what? It's the little things that bring you joy that you should really cling to. 
Yeah, that's self care. Especially in this economy. <laughs> I mean, I look like an expensive rug. Yeah. Fuck that rug. Hmm? It brought you joy in for the Hennai. Brings you joy? Well. So, this seems to be his, like, personal diary, but it doesn't really reek of, like, scientific notes. Is there anything that we could find in the library, or does the diary mention any sort of laboratory where he would have kept written notes? Well, uh, to be fair, we're on an elevator right now. We're not we're not getting really? back to the, the library. Oh, that's fair. I forgot. But no. It doesn't notice anything about a, 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 laborator- a laboratory at all. Laboratory. Laboratory. Well, go ahead and uh-huh. read the next chapter then. <laughs> Thanks. Great. This might have some new answers. Mm-hmm. Formidable hey! guests. <laughs> Finally, all were attendant. Were in attendance. Much had changed since that day the letter was sent. Nothing they needed to know right away. Over dinner, I announced my hypothesis. Over views on the discoveries in the beginning. For they mocked me. Ideas couldn't even be struck into the most intelligent among my kind. Pitting, rage, growing temperament was held back before their bellies were stuffed. The rambling below the manor was upsetting to know that if I were to show them, like the others, they would flee into madness. A new plan was drawn up. One for us. One, for as they slept, as I no longer needed to. As drinks... As drinks flied, and they rebuttaled remarks, drew down with the sun, they stumbled to their rooms. Night grew long, in anticipation and nervousness would overcome me, if I still had a beating heart. I murdered them as they slept, bringing my colleagues back much with much of their intellect still intact. A remarkable triumph for even the most experienced of necromancers. None shall look different from another's. All followers, they became the Reapers. Quickly becoming a follower of the new commune, They learned that they are dead, that they will revive the dead on and on throughout the ages, throughout the years, forever. That's the end of the chapter? That's the end of the chapter. Good God. So it's more or less worthless to kill these guys. I guess so. That's annoying. Mm. Well, I imagine. Well, Victor is a bastard, so there's that. This journal's really not like pressing his case for you guys to be all gung ho and like him anymore. Jesus. <laughs> no. Yeah, we can still... Yeah, it's almost like the author went out of his way to make him a bastard. Really, somebody you should know, put that guy down. <laughs> point, yeah. It doesn't matter how tragic of a childhood this guy has. He's not redeemable. I mean, he doesn't really have a tragic backstory. It's just him being an asshole all the way down. Chances are, he was born with a silver spoon. His mouth just like everything always given to him, and he always wanted more. Greedy little fuck. Yeah, it does sound like a twang, doesn't it? Chapter 11 yeah. How I Didn't Get the Pony I Wanted When I Was Young, and How This All Began. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dang it. Yeah. Why are we always getting all the ba- answers to the backstories after <laughs> we read the chapter? <laughs> <laughs> Is this not the same backstory as, oh crap, what was his name? The bad guy from the new Puss in Boots movie? Yeah. <laughs> Little Jack I had, every, yeah. I had everything a child could want. 
Yes, and everything a child can want, a loving family, a thriving business to inherit. <laughs> okay, so, you need to know useless crap like that. that. <laughs> That's Victor Crimson. <laughs> then I started murdering people and bringing them back as my undead slaves. <laughs> You're a dog, are you? Yes, in the face. What? <laughs> oh my gosh! You're not gonna murder these people! Oh, yes, I am. And bring them back as my undead slaves. Why? <laughs> <laughs> You're horrible! You're a You're monster! Horrible. You're a monster! <laughs> horrible. Oh, Jack, you're losing a lot of guys here. <laughs> nah, fuck them. They're just rattlings. <laughs> Victor. So, well, we've at least established yeah, that the Reaper is <laughs> oh, What took you so long, idiot? <laughs> well, at least we've established that the Reapers are, in fact, undead because he kills them and brings them back. I wonder if that's what he planned for us. Possible. But he would have likely needed to be present for that. And he wasn't. Just his minions were. No, mm -hmm. I mean up on the mountain. Or what? Guess, what? I guess depending on how fresh the bodies would have to be? I don't know. I don't know enough about... I don't know anything about necromancy. If only we knew someone who knew about necromancy. Yeah, if only. <laughs> But we'll never know. If only we knew somebody who was dead. <laughs> and okay. no one says a thing about it. <laughs> it's, just funny. it's like, Anthrax, you're undead. Dang. I'm in. Shocked face. <gasps> <laughs> they need me. They finally need me. Why would you say that? <laughs> now that you mention it, how is Anthrax here? <laughs> um, you know, it, it's almost as if Todd over there, those incense the other day. Hmm. We, yeah? What the fuck did you do with that spoiled milk that made... I don't know if that he's invisible or not. Yeah, he's he's visible. He's just hanging. He, he he is visible. Yes, he's visible. Okay, then I don't know how. What about spoiled milk and like uh the like the burnt cigarettes <laughs> made this? Look, it it's it's a weird touch. I'm not even sure exactly how I know it. Cough, cough, sorcerer, not wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I just. I just kind of feel it out, feel, feel out the necromantic energy, call upon my dad, you know, like you do. It's like blinking, you, you figure it out. <laughs> Look, I, I actually mix, like, food every now and then, you find out you, you enjoy something like that. Not once have I ever just accidentally waved my hands and summoned an undead being. <laughs> the the Not cat even the cat once. looks back at you while reading the book. <laughs> oh, oh. It's still not undead. <laughs> its head spins all the way around. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's neck can do that. Have you seen an owl? What's to say it's not also part owl? It's obviously something that I don't know. Yeah, the the cat says who, who how like who 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 who. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I can even summon an owl or a cat. I can summon an owl, and I summon my familiar, and okay. it's made of goo. Goo owl, like a gummy bear, like a gummy owl. Yeah, like a gummy bear, exactly like that. that like I owl. really don't know how you guys do that, like. I could is. probably summon just my dad. That's about it. <laughs> you know, apparently, I feel like I was like uh, the pot calling the kettle black kind of situation where it was there. You got a good point. But I still feel that 
that's his soul from the undead whatever it's a soul from another pl plane of existence and you're just like get over here yes. yeah more or less okay i mean sure sure um do you have any insight as to how those reapers are made Have you ever just sneezed and, oh god, there was something else? No, not quite. I mean, it's like a feeling, I suppose. Like, you feel out that there's this thing out there. You know what I mean? Like, this, this thing how magic works. <laughs> Look, it absolutely is how magic works. Are you a sorcerer? No. No, but I'm a wizard! Exactly! You're a wizard! Like, you gotta learn it. I have to feel it out. I don't think that's funny. I think, I think you're doing me a gaslight. Look, do, do you see a spell book on me? No, I just do the thing. I mean... Like, you need to study because you're a nerd. But me, no, I just... I just do it. I just feel it out. How's it been looking out for you, man? I mean, this guy's here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do it again with someone different? I don't think I can. Do you guys have any milk and cigarettes? Maybe I can try. <laughs> Roger hands you a pack of cigarettes and was like, I'm all out of milk. Milk and cigarettes. Milk. Hey, uh, Gromit, does your magic jug can it produce milk? Uh, um, uh, um, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no milk, huh? Maybe we'll try later. I pour out mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> I just I don't know. I don't oh, think yeah, that yeah. ever just, went out for mayo. Is, is oh, that it? I think it learned what milk was from what you found under the table. Yeah, no. uh, that's gross. What I'm the hell is sure that? I'm gonna know that's not what milk. You're, you're referring to. What, I mean. He had a jug of some spoiled milk and that shit that Grandma just poured out on what what that is so gross and it's everywhere. Uh did did you have to do it in this tiny little elevator? It stinks. <laughs> the the little the little bit of uh mayonnaise on the ground almost begins to like soup together like as if it's moving. <laughs> uh I don't think milk is supposed to do that. That's definitely not milk. Whatever it is, it's gross. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I'm sorry um, I asked, Gromit. Thank you, though, for entertaining me. Uh, for a moment. Oh. Absolutely horrifying. So that, was that the uh, 11th chapter or the 10th chapter? The, the 10th one. chapter. Oh, so I'm, I'm ready for the 11th, if you guys are. Yeah, read on. Chapter yeah. 11. Mm -hmm. Follow blindly. At last, assembly had begun, the rattlings evolving past their useless forms and becoming a mindless, tittering follower. Feel free, my newfound pilgrims, breed in the depths and dig beyond the reaches of the manor. A foul screeching comes from Grimwatch below. Pitchforks and fire were in a crowd, trying to storm the hill. A particularly ragged indigent named Morris Oldfield claimed he saw something vile and putrid, announcing to them he was right, and how it was and all the others were to die. He fell and fled to the city, only barely making it to the village. He became afflicted with the flames and the poison we threw at him. 
The Skaven, the Skaven's ability to fight persistently became a trait I admired. We circled them as they came to the manor. Even my own family fought back. They did not understand this newfound knowledge. I burnt my own city to the ground. Savage. This guy's brutal. Hmm. I, I, how many do you think he killed? I mean, was that Well, the... I think I think we actually met them. I was about to say, mm -hmm. it wasn't... Do you think that was them? Yeah. Maybe. Did you bring people back when you were dead? Yeah. Why not? All to ten. Ah. It's disturbing. I mean... They tried everything. They knew it was... Well, I guess... They didn't know what they were getting themselves into. <clears throat> Once again, I just look around at us. I hope we're uh, all on board to accept the same fate should we fail. <coughs> I, I mean, I trust you guys to murder me if I die. <laughs> uh, I'll try. <laughs> the the I really want to stay dead kind of talk. The, yes! the, under normal circumstances, that sentence would sound extremely odd. But I being undead is not that bad. Wish to be killed. I don't trust you. Of <laughs> don't allow me to continue to walk around out there like that. I wouldn't want to be like Roger that. looks at each of you individually and nods and goes, yeah, I won't. Good. <laughs> and then, I don't know why, but Gertie will probably be the one that will live us all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you uh, get out of this place, you know, you got to tell them, like, we tried. I've almost died so many times. And yet you're still kicking. That's why I'm like... Why is your bar so low for success? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I dare read the last chapter. Dare. Dare say. Chapter 12. Mm -hmm. The Lord of Hunger. Atoning the Skaven in their numbers... They grow rapidly. We need to have some kind of concern of order. Experiments began on the poor beasts until a nothing special creature among the rest fa finally responded to the Corium in a fascinating way. We depicted it as a new lord. Oh. Not allowing them to stray from an objective. It is the Lord, Zeolanthia, the God. Much mm -hmm. needs to be done. Word of a God in search of the world's defying endbringer, and her archangels spread among the continent. Merely this is the power and reach. Were we bear are looking for. The letter was sent. Hmm. And that's the last chapter of Victor Grimwatch's well, book. I have to admit, that was uh, a bit scary of an upbringing of the whole situation. And the fact that it cuts off there mentions nothing about how that giant ass rock showed up in the sky. Definitely some damning evidence in this journal. <laughs> Definitely lawyer talk. Yeah, this right guy's away. crazy as fuck. I'm gonna use the bathroom quick, but you guys uh you guys talk amongst yourselves.
So I just look at Todd directly. It's like, would you consider yourself a necromancer? Hmm. I wasn't a no. Eat. I mean, I haven't brought a dead body back. I just kind of found dead. Could you bring... I don't know how else to explain that one. Could you make one of those things that we fought back in those town? Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, just God. radiating confidence and, like... <laughs> I, all I'm worried about is you're not going to murder us all in the sleep and uh, turn us into those kind of things when you get a chance, are you? I mean, I will murder you guys in your sleep. The way you worded that was very um, ominous. No. Um, um, look, I happen to be a good person and a lawyer. Okay, that may not be entirely... Uh, that was a very <laughs> contradictory statement. That may be true, but uh, I try. <laughs> Look, I'm not a bad guy. <laughs> I mean, you say that, but you definitely, definitely are doing some necromancy shit. I mean, is it really necromancy if it's your family? <laughs> Yes. Can, can, a guy, yes. Make it can, yes. can a guy not raise a family in peace? <laughs> yeah, no. Rest in pieces. <laughs> Wait a second. Evan, mind wanders for a moment. What? What did you do, Silas? Wait a second. There's a lot that you're not telling us. Wait, what do you mean? But but I didn't do anything to Silas. You you made a talking head. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was there. I saw you do that. I fucked you that. Like, are you no, sure you, you can't do like that shit that was back in town? Uh <laughs> Okay, maybe a little. You can! God. <laughs> Okay, so... Do I kill him now, or do we wait for him to go bad? I'm, I'm not a bad guy. I was... <laughs> look. You're look, a lawyer! I... <laughs> yes. <laughs> All coming together! <laughs> <laughs> How can you okay. claim to not be a bad guy? You're a lawyer! Well, I'm for not a bad one... guy! I'm a lawyer! That's worse! <laughs> look, I got us... <laughs> Mostly out of that bullshit courtroom. Mostly. <laughs> I mean... I don't know why I wasn't more weirded out about it then. In retrospect, there's a lot of things that are starting to, like, fall into place that is adding up to, like, uh... Just don't. Just don't be a potential threat it would end up being uh messy unfortunate I'm, Look, I'm, I'm i'm not a threat <laughs> and just as you <laughs> muddle those remarks <laughs> the elevator hits the bottom and the cage slides <laughs> to the side the tunnel ahead would be dark if not lit by the corium glitter within the hallway Whoa. The sky's interior decorating leaves much to be desired. I don't think he did any of this. Yeah, I don't think he did it all. And yeah, only I mean, in the distance can you hear the quiet munching, crunching, and squeals. Oh god, no more of these fucking things. <laughs> <laughs> Pogo? Or, what? <laughs> Oh god. I mean, if I can see it and I ask, I simply ask the group, do I shoot it now? 
My vote is that you shoot first and ask questions never. I mean... You saw what these things almost did to Gromit last time. Do we see anything or do we only hear anything in, in the... The tunnel. The tunnels are deep. Yeah, I know, but like, do we s just hear the? the yeah, tunnels? like Rogers. Rogers going to be casting light on his on his brick every every minute or so. So within thirty feet, you don't see anything just yet. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, Roger. And yeah. I'm just gonna pick up a non corium rock. Mm -hmm. And I and I just tap my turn my headlight on. Mm -hmm. Like so, there's like, uh, can we try casting it light on this? And uh, yep, there you go. And I just fist bump the rock. Okay. Thank you. I give it to my cat. Okay. And I'm just like, we'll pick up a rock and then cast light on it and then just hook it down the hallway as hard as I can. Okay. Um, you can give me an athletics or acrobatics check about the distance you're going to make it. Whatever your your total is, times it by three, and that'll be the distance you throw it. So three times 20 would be 60. So you throw it 60 feet down the way. 60 feet so it looms out into the darkness past your light you can hear the quickness of feet gather towards the uh the rock and you can see where the light is off in 60 feet you can see like the shadows and figures against the wall over they all like surround um surround this little rock before they peer down the hallway themselves you see the okay. horrid mutations of the pigs but you also see two of the rattling mutations with the the corium struck out of part of their appendages all looking yeah, down the hallway it. looking at the shining rock and the things that you guys have glittering on you i'm gonna pop my beetle and they start straight running down the hallway towards you guys um, I'm going to be firebolting <laughs> these things as they're running down the hallway at us. Everybody yeah, roll, absolutely. roll for roll initiative. For initiative. <laughs> roll for initiative. Initiative! Rattling mutation. Oh boy! Please wait. I have, two, I have two pigs and two rattling mutations. So. Time to break in these cat dice, boy! You got cat dice? Yeah, the cat dice that Caleb gave me for Christmas. Mm. 14 total. I can even have a cat. Oh, you know what? If if I didn't get a chance to pop my beetle, I would probably pop a, I, a, the, the shrimp instead. I've been feeling a little ready. Yeah, to I'm going to say up. I'm going to say the cavern's only 10 feet wide. That's fine. Yeah. You guys get the idea. They're running straight down like this yeah. cavern towards all of you. Yep. Got it. Roger's gonna march on the like left hand side, bring out his shield, and uh just march about ten feet straight ahead. Last one. Ooh, that's a better one. Okay, so Gromit. Uh sixteen. Gertie. Eleven. Seven or eleven? Eleven. One one. Eleven. Okay. Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> Roger. Roger got a fifteen. And Miko. Slime Daddy got a twenty six. Evan. Twelve. And Todd. Fourteen. By nobody's surprise, Mixo is top of the round. <laughs> you see that uh, uh, the light rock got kicked to the side, and now these things are just barreling down the darkness towards you guys. Hey, I have a dumb question. I have a dumb answer. You You're think right. I could hit all of these guys with a lightning bolt? It is 10 feet wide, 
and they are like fifty feet down. Yeah, okay. it's got a hundred foot range. That match is only five feet wide. If you got in the middle, can I line it yep. up in the middle and mm-hmm. hit them all? Yeah. Yep. Okay, deck save from all of them, fifteen up. Okay, they have a plus three to this. There's a thirteen plus three. There's a twelve plus three. A three plus three, and a ten plus three. Two passes, two fails. They take 31 points of lightning damage on a fail, 15 on a success. Thirty and fifteen. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Thirty-one and fifteen. <coughs> Thirty-one and fifteen. Yeah. Hot damn! You see, one of the rattling mutations gets scorched real fucking hard. Looks like it's on like death's door. Same with one of the uh, the pig <laughs> mutations here. He looks a bit more hardy than the other one, but the other two kind of like pin themselves to the wall as the lightning strikes the other two. As uh, they, I'm, they can... I'm, I'm going to look at the others and be like, I don't want to do that too many more times. I can only do that, like, maybe twice more today. They get struck by the lightning. <laughs> they didn't like that. <laughs> and Rob's just like, Jesus Christ. That. But, uh... <laughs> no, they didn't die. Next in the initiative, at a 17, is one of these mutations, as it is going to make 30, 35 feet closer, is roughly within 5 feet range. You guys see that it gets real close to you guys, as uh, like it, it goes through your guys' dim light, and then into your close, close range light, this oh, big mutation just is fried from the lightning, but is just, uh, it has a cleaver in one hand, just like as you've seen before. But it's got blood coming out <clears throat> of side the sides of its mouth. And you can see like it almost has like pierce like pierce holes in its cheek as if it's like not on bone before. Ew. That's gross. It it holds its cleaver up, getting prepared to strike. Next in the initiative is Gromit. <laughs> Okay, um, it's five feet away from us, you said? Yeah. <laughs> That's by He's himself. Front. He is I'd by himself, yes. Okay. No, I'm saying who is in front, because I'm saying, depending Roger. on... Roger. Roger. closest. But Gromit is a small creature. He can also move between you guys. Yeah. I'm... What's in front? Okay, who's on second? Well, if this guy's right in front of us, I'm gonna go for it. Do the rapier stuff. Uh, oh boy, here we go, kill it again. <laughs> oh boy, here I go, murder. Nice, sixteen plus six. That definitely hits. Plus six. What is my sneak attack again? Three d six. Six, seven, uh, right here. Eight. Eight. That's not great. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven piercing damage. Total? Yeah, I rolled pretty shitty. Gromit, how would you like to put this? Pig mutation down. I I run out and I stab him in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> he squeals louder than he ever has before, gripping to his groin before going down. Yeah, okay. and then I jump back and hide behind. I don't know somebody. Okay. Yep. All right, uh, that would be Gromit's turn next in the initiative. Stab him in the dick. <laughs> Fifteen was Roger. Roger, roughly about forty feet away, are the other three down the hallway. 
Roger is going to move another 10 feet forward and yep. then hold his action to make a melee attack with the brick. Okay. Stone Cold Justice. You got it. That's, that's all I'm going to do. All right, perfect, because Todd is up next. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, here we go. Um, <laughs> to be clear, I want to I want to make him to make an attack as soon as anything enters his range. You got it. Any any hostile creature. Okay. I'm gonna cast firebolt at the nearest motherfucker. You got it. Uh, plus seven hit. The next one would be well, a rat mutation, the one that was struck four. by the lightning. Well, a fourteen hit. A rat mutation. No, it will not. Okay, no. so as bonus action, I'm going to have Anthrax go up and whack that same one. You got it. And that'll be... <laughs> Roll. Okay, not 19. That's definitely hidden. That's going to hit. Three. Roll. For a whopping nine necrotic damage. Anthrax, how would you like to put down this rattling? Yeah! Anthrax is just gonna, like, smash it up against the wall. Just... <laughs> just kapam! Ah, uh, this is the ones with, like, the shards of Corium, like, injected into their body as he smashes against the wall. He just loses life and consciousness after being fried by lightning. Well... Ah! 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 <laughs> Fun fact Since he took out the closest That means the other two Have to get around Anthrax To get to the party Yep <laughs> <laughs> Attacks of opportunity let's go Good thing because they both rolled 14s as well It's both their turns they're both going to try to run past Anthrax at the same time. So I have here that it's a Rattling Mutation that runs by first. Okay, Rattling Mutation. He's going to take a whack square to the back of the head. Roll okay. my d20. For a... Oh, uh, seven plus... Was it four? Uh, yeah, uh, but will an 11 hit? Both of them book it past Anthrax with ease. <laughs> Oh, you little rat shits! <laughs> ah, no time for your games! Is he just. They both just run past, snarling and squealing. You are not one of us! <laughs> <laughs> As they both run down the pathway. One of them is 10 feet away, the pig is 10 feet away, and the rat is 5 feet away from the party. Mm -hmm. Roger? Roger. It, the, the rat mutation would actually make it to you. So oh, the, cool. the the rattling mutation, you got it, and then he's going to try to take his attacks on you. So smack in the face to a rat. Smack the rat. Hey, that's a nat 20. Oh, okay. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> is it just a... Is it, is it just a smack, or...? <laughs> That's what I'm. That's what I'm getting ready to find out. I'm not gonna <laughs> smite on it. I'm gonna save my spell slots. Uh, but that's twelve times two, twenty-four plus nine, thirty-three. Total. Total. He had no smite. He had thirty hit points left. Finish this rattling mutation. So it's like this rattling mutation comes running up, and it like. Roger sees it coming, so he starts cranking it around and around, and then just whips it around the cave, smacks it into the skull, and smacks his skull into the side of the wall, and just pain. Nice. Nice. And the pig mutation is five feet away from you, can't do anything else. Next in the initiative is... Evan. Okay. Uh, so, was I able to summon my uh, cannon ahead of time, or no? Sure. Awesome. So, summon the bullet shrimp, and it sits on my sh shoulder like a fucking parrot, or a predator cannon, whatever you want to look at it as. 
And uh, I'm just going to fire a, a firebolt at, uh, is it the last pig? Yep. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Uh, that'll be a 24 to hit. That hits. That'll be for uh, nine points of fire damage. Okay. He still lives. And then the bullet shrimp. Mm hmm. Uh, will a. Ooh, I don't know if this will hit a 14. 14 does not hit. Ooh, it missed. Um, That's my turn. Okay. Last in the initiative is Gertie. There's one pig mutation screaming in the hallway five feet away, ten feet away from you guys. <laughs> I'm so easily baited. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's immediately Just one baited. in the hall. Yeah, fuck that guy. Um, she's going to go after him with great hair. You got it. Um, one cat I that's not... I'm surprised your mother didn't want to listen in on this. Is she... <laughs> <laughs> oh, she... <laughs> um, you really cut out there. Sorry. <laughs> he doesn't really like it when I swear. <laughs> oh no, she could have learned so much about the game. Uh, <laughs> through search words, the fine general people that you you're interacting with yeah. i was i was i had nothing but great things to say about you guys today she was asking me about the nerd trip in november and i said i that is the trip i'm looking most forward to this year i can't wait to see you guys you literally um, said that while on a trip with your mother yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you're having her listen in to us play D D. No, I have my headphones on. We're not going to make a good impression. <laughs> I See? have my headphones on, and I'm out on the balcony, and she's inside watching TV and playing on her phone. <laughs> that being said, I rolled an 11 to hit? 11 does not hit. Fuck! Okay. So then, the second weapon, then. <laughs> yeah, she could have listened. Nice are not rolling. She could have she could have listened to the journal part and then been like, "Yeah, I went to Canada to go si to go find those psychopaths." <laughs> yeah. Sure, it's fine. This is like these are all red flags back in the nineties. Like, <laughs> second uh, second roll is a. Long sword, that's a 14 to hit. A 14 does not hit. Both of those are misses. You said uh, 14 misses? A 14 does yeah. not hit the pig mutation. Oh, well. Cool. You guys have um, shot like three 14s here so far. He's just dying. Um, I mean, there's not a whole lot that I can do, I guess. Okay. That's it. <laughs> top, top, top of the round, back to Mikso. You're, you see, like about ten feet away from you, is the one pig mutation dodging the rapier and the longsword from uh, Gertie. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna firebolt it. I'm gonna it. go after. I'm gonna go it. after that boy. How many total enemies are left? Actually, one. Just okay. one. Okay, firebolt. Yeah, the lightning bolt was massive. Uh, does a 16 hit? A 16 does hit. For a total of 16 fire damage. Mixo, how would you like to finish off this pig mutation? So, like, as it's dodging around her attacks, he just, like, lines up the next dodge it's gonna make and firebolts around her where it's gonna dodge to. It gets blasted in the side, falls over. It's taken too much scorch damage. Falls there, flat, dead. Nice. But throughout all the commotion and the sounds and and explosions you guys have created for sound, it reverberates throughout the tunnels. It is only deep within that you can hear the scuttering of feet and the screeches of pigs within.
Well, I know this, and I just point to my gun turret for the most part. Uh, only lasts for about an hour, but I'm definitely going to get its money's worth. Watch. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I, I think we can handle it. Does anyone, did anyone get hurt? No. Yeah. Good. Feeling fine. No, that lightning bolt was a good jump on him. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was, uh, oh, yeah. That was like, exactly what I wanted to happen. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, though, you're like, it's a narrow path. Yep. There's <laughs> nowhere for them to escape to. <laughs> they are They're, sitting ducks. Mm -hmm. You can They're just... running down a 10 foot wide <laughs> corridor. Me with lightning bolt. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> They're However, only 50 feet away, sweating profusely. <laughs> okay, and also, uh, consequences are true. It was 100 foot in length. Mm -hmm. So, like, anything else could have saw it, just point that out. Mm hmm. Okay, um, I think, uh, we, I think we can handle this. I really. Like, just bolstered by this fact that we just wipe the floor with these creations. Like, we, we got this in the bag. Famous Easy last piece. words. <laughs> and then, uh, let's go. Let, let's, let's show these guys what's up. And so we moved on. As you guys journey. make your way down the dark and tunneling hallways, you can see that more of the corium starts to become more apparent as it's still like within the earth in the hallway. It's what lights the way very dimly the whole way through. And you go finding yourselves all the way to that spot where the rock was thrown. And you find yourselves at a uh, at one spot that branches off to the north, one to the east, and one to the west. All dark tunneling hallways, all with their own screeching and skittering sounds. Footprints overlap in the dirt between the pigs and the rats. No direction has really been able to sh be shown as if they move around too much down here in the caverns. God. If I knew which way we had to go, we could collapse the other two tunnels. But I don't know. Any ideas? Shoot. Just pick a direction and start walking. What? Slowly, quietly. Uh, why don't... Why don't you lead the way? And I look directly at Anthrax. Oh, so you like me when I'm convenient. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> And Anthrax is going to scooch on ahead. Which way are you going to go? North, east, or west? Mm, east is beast. That's the way you're going? You got it. Yep. So Anthrax goes on ahead as you guys march with him. Anthrax reaches the room before anybody else, and you can see that there's this uh, long table with a couple of cleavers put into the table and you can see that there's bodies of different types of creatures being chopped into little bits blood has completely stained what color this table could have been the hack marks in it seem to be driven in over a, a time of years you can see that there's four pigs that are on top of the table munching the the unknown creatures that once were chopped up here they're devouring Are they like into the table. like actual pigs or like pig like creatures the pig mutations oh fuck pig mutations and they haven't noticed us yet right they haven't noticed you because you're invisible but they have they have keen senses and stuff like that so look they're gonna they haven't noticed anthrax it's anthrax is invisible. How far ahead was anthrax? I'd say probably about 
40 ish feet. Okay. So around like a winding bit to the tunnel. Mm hmm. So Anthrax is going to really quickly go back and be like, all right, guys, hold on. There's some dumbass rats back there. I mean, pigs, pigs, shut up, pigs. <laughs> okay. I want to try something. Get ready. You want to try something. Get ready for what? I'm going to see if I can't deal with them all. On your own? I mean, I'm dead. What are you worried about? <laughs> uh, giving our position away. <laughs> okay, fine. Ooh. I have another plan. Ooh. I have a plan. I have a plan. Hold on. Hold on, you guys. I have a plan. I have a plan. I have a plan. Plan, plan, plan. Here's a plan, plan. I'm gonna see how fucking stupid they are. Just... Just get ready to start swinging if it doesn't quite go the way I want. I'm, I'm interested to see this. Yeah. And uh, Anthrax is just going to fade back into the darkness and uh, scooch back on over to those uh, piggy pigs, uh, all invisible-like. You can see like one of them kind of like gets their nose and, and snout off the table and kind of like looks around in your direction and sniffs. <laughs> And like looks and goes back to eating. <laughs> I'd this imagine dumbass pig thinks he can sniff out a ghost. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so Are we approaching like very stealth, like just so we don't like we're not super yeah, far I'd, away. I'd say go for it. So Anthrax is just gonna like all still invisible, just kind of. Float over these pigs and just go. Hey, dumbasses! <laughs> you see one look at another one. Another one looks up at another one, and then goes back to continue eating. <laughs> hey, no! Up here! Up here! Snaps fingers. Snaps invisible fingers. <laughs> they look up. <laughs> they look at each other with almost like cloudy eyes. Go Can back. you guys even understand what I'm saying? Go back to eating. Oh god, they really are stupid. So, what's what's in this room? What's in this room? It's a long table with like knives driven into the like their their cleavers are are pelted into the table. I'd say the table is at least 20 feet long and about 10 feet wide. There's a couple, Anthrax is gonna pick up a knife. There's a couple of chains that hang from the ceiling, with a couple of like old rotten skeletons oh. that hang from it. Oh, oh, oh! Wait, no, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep ex keep keep on describing for me. Uh, there's a pile of bones in a corner, strewn about are like the the small little finger bones and stuff like that from old corpses are just. Strong about the ground. Mm. So Anthrax is gonna go over to uh, one of these skelly boys, right? Okay. And uh, I'm gonna pick up a pick up a femur. Okay. And uh, he's gonna be like, "Oh, sweet skeletal boy, I'm so sorry." And. Uh, He's gonna float back up over the pigs and then just drop one right on its head. As uh, one of, as, as this almost just knocks onto one of the pigs, it reacts quickly. It kind of just like puts its hands on the table and kind of like gets up in this aggressive stance looking at the other ones. The other ones kind of look back at it. <laughs> <laughs> He like begins to go on his uh his hind legs and stand up. You can see like the blood still drips from his nostril down across his mouth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like Anthrax is gonna like sneak he, sneak around to like another pile of bones and just He's gonna use keen senses. Oh my god. 
you see that he like raises a hand and points to the tunnel that goes to the west. And Anthrax is going to immediately start he, punching. He grabs the femur <laughs> and he points and goes. <laughs> he points the femur into the air. Punch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> give me a give me an attack. So he points off in that direction, and mm-hmm. Anthrax. Uh, with the bed. <laughs> Okay, 18 plus 4. Yeah, that'll, yeah, do that'll hit one of them. Yeah, boy. Uh, uh, uh. And roll for a total of 12 necrotic damage. Just square into the face of one of these. Just kapow! <laughs> As you smack in the face of one of these uh, pig mutations that uh, were wondering what the hell's been going on. You see that the four of them get up and start leaping their way and running into the hallway. As the hallway bends, you guys are about 15 feet away before you realize that these things are coming. Everybody roll for initiative as there's four of them coming in the hallway towards you guys. (coughs) Oh. (laughs) Okay. Settle down now. They really do not give a shit about ghosts punching them in the face. <laughs> but like they they can smell like cr- they can smell creatures and and like food. They're reacting to the scent of blood and yeah, to fresh stimulate. food. It's like yeah, he he may have just smacked the pig, but they're surrounded by dead things as well. Like yeah, it's not that they like, they probably haven't seen a ghost either. <laughs> but uh, probably even trained that ghosts aren't aren't even something they fuck with. Like they probably got swatted a couple times by a reaper, and it's like, oh god, oh no, power, no dad, power, no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Gromit. Uh, fifteen plus five, twenty plus the two, twenty-two. Damn, Gertie. Mm. Gertie. Plus... Gertie, Gertie. Oh, can you hear me? Can't hear Okay, sorry. That's 15 plus, and then what's the check? It's an initial. Okay, 15, so 18. 18. Roger. Sorry. Roger got a 20. Me 19 so? plus 1. Mixo also got a 20. 14 plus 6. <laughs> Evan? Uh, seven. Todd? Uh, Todd got... Give me a second. Roll, roll, roll. Come on. Uh, that will be a... Bop, 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 bop. Dirty 20. Yeah. Wow, there's... You guys got three <laughs> dirty 20s. Three. Three. I rolled three dirty 20s. Gromit got a 22 as well. Yeah. And none of you are going <laughs> first, as one of the pig mutations got a nat 20 plus 3. 23. He zips around the corner, coming face to face with you guys. And I'm going to guess he sees who who was in the marching order. It was uh, Roger and who? I'd be second. Roger and Evan? Yeah. So we're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a d6. 1 to 3 is Roger. 4 to 6 is Evan, who it attacks. That's a 3. Roger, it is. Bring it on, AC 18. Okay, this thing uh, comes rearing, like around the corner, squealing. It has a cleaver in hand from the table, and it's going to make two melee attacks. It has a plus seven to hit. Uh, one is a 13 plus summon, one is a 15 plus seven. They'll both hit. Okay, each of them are 2d10s plus four, so I'll tell you. That is. Zero zero is ten, right? Yep. Yeah. That is fucking garbage. So seven plus four, <laughs> eleven, and one plus four is five. So sixteen mm-hmm. points of slashing damage. Oh, you got the one zero on it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then it's I know that feeling. Second attack. So that was sixteen points of damage on the first hit, and then a zero. 
and a two plus four, so 10, 12, mm. 16 more points of slashing damage. Damn, 32. It literally half hit me in a single strike. Yeah, as the, the cleaver just strikes into you once and then again, kind of like throwing you off balance quickly. <laughs> Next in the initiative is Gromit, though. <laughs> okay. So I can get between everyone because I'm very tiny. Right? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to run up and stab him in the <coughs> but, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see the bonus actions. It is by itself, so you can bonus get your action. Dash, disengage. Yeah, so I'll get my thing. Okay. Okay. 15 plus 6. Blackjack. That hits. Okay. 3d6. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, D eight, D high. That's good. Four. That's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen piercing damage. <laughs> eighteen piercing damage. That is a good strike. Yeah. And they're immune to poison, right? So that's the thing, right? yeah. Yeah. Okay, he did not like that. He took a, a hefty strike from getting whacked on the head before Please. as well. Um, I don't know if one disengage or whatever. But the pig mutation still stands. Yeah. Um, yeah, blah, 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 blah. I totally forgot they also have the Defiling Scream, which I should have used when they couldn't make the run last tunnel. Um, Damn. Dagger. Um, I don't like the sound of Defiling Scream. <laughs> you don't? I do. I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna bonus action disengage and jump back. But you I'm got gonna... it. Okay, for the three people who tied for the, the Dirty 20... I'll let Will go first. Do you have more than a plus three? I have a plus six. In dex? Uh, no, his initiative is plus six. Because a pig mutation also got a dirty 20, but he has a plus three to dex. I have a plus two. Yeah, I add my int modifier to dex. Roger only has a plus, plus one to dex. Uh, I add my, my int modifier to my initiative so i get a plus six to those but like usually when it's a tiebreaker it's whoever has the highest dex mod right yeah so the the pig mutation has the highest one i think so then he's gonna rush in he's gonna do the same thing one through three is on roger four through six is on evan that's a one okay bring it on another pig mutation runs across he pulls out a cleaver and makes two cleave attacks at Roger. One is a three plus four. No, three plus seven. That's a, a ten. That's a, a miss. And a fourteen plus seven, which is a twenty-one. Yep, that'll hit. Okay. Or it would. <laughs> nah. Or it would if I didn't have Mixo use uh, normal shift to uh, make you be a little disadvantage. All right. That's a six plus seven. All right. 13? So two minutes. <laughs> yeah, Mixo mm -hmm. sees, like behind, like, behind enemy lines there. He's coming out swinging. And just kind of, like, pulls him back just a little bit for the blade not to slice right through Roger some more. And then at the end of his turn, so there's two of them down the hallway, is... So who did you guys decide on? Is it Todd, Mixo, or Todd Roger? Todd can go first. I go first. Okay. Todd, there's one on death's door here, and there's another fresh one came around the corner. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and blast the one on death's door. Why the hell not? You got it. Okay. Uh, <coughs> That will be eight 
Hey, 19. 12 plus 7. That hits. And firebolt damage, 2d10. 15 damage. Todd, how would you like to finish this pigmentation? Just come plam right in his pig ass face. <laughs> right in his bloody, <laughs> mucked up pig ass face is a fireball. Yep. Eat, eat shit, pig man. Um, I never got a chance to eat you, so I can't. <laughs> oh, so you can talk. <laughs> and he dies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as a bonus action, uh, Anthrax is gonna, uh, punch the one he's been punching square in the face. Yeah, there's two of them in the room with you still, so you can punch one in the head. Yeah, the, the one that he already punched once. Yep. Just, he's like body blocking, he's like standing right in front of his all like, <laughs> you're gonna fucking look at me! It screams <laughs> in his Plus face. <laughs> uh... And that will unfortunately be a two plus four six. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sad now. <laughs> That's a big old no. Uh, Just a big I'll, old no. Just uh, you can choose whether it's Mixo or Roger who's next. I'll be right back. One second. Uh, uh you want Mixo or Roger first? It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, we'll let the caster go first. Why not? Get him his uh, reaction back quicker. Yeah. Kelly, what was your initiative? Uh, 18. Watch you go next, and then the two remaining pigs, and then me last. Well, one of those pigs has to uh, get around Anthrax first. <laughs> Even if he wants to ignore Anthrax, he just might take a punch square to the back of the head. Okay. Pop. So did you okay, decide? Mixo is gonna go next. You got it. And uh, how is this injured pig looking? Oh, uh, the the new the new one that came in is fresh, and the other one just got scorched to death. Yeah, he he took one square to the face from uh, Todd. Yeah, so Mixo, Mixo's just going to try and preserve resources here and uh, hit him with that firebolt. You got hopefully. it. Uh, does a 15 hit? Uh, 15 hits exactly. Nice, nice, nice. For a total of 17 fire damage. Holy <laughs> fuck. Still is. Uh, it's 2d10. It's true. I get two d ten and one d eight. I wish my two my two d tens would be rolling like that. Yeah, I they did. Doing... <laughs> <laughs> no, you got hit by two. You got hit by four d tens. You know, it's crazy how dice are. It's like, uh, so this attack can do everywhere between three to twenty eight damage. Mm. Uh, how do you count on any of that? <laughs> exactly. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to do, Mixo? Uh, no, Mixo's just gonna uh, stay right where he's at. Alright, and now it's Roger's turn, who has just dodged two of the strikes. Roger is going to... Oh god, do I heal? Can I heal? Can still lay on hands, but that's my action. Uh, so I'm now of the idea that if if you can survive the next round of combat, just fucking wail on this guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I'm just gonna swing for the fences. You uh, got it. Two, two brick attacks. <laughs> ka-chow, ka-chow. A 15 and a 22. They both hit. So, three, six on each, plus nine. Uh, 20 on the first hit. <laughs> that kills him, but what's the overkill? 
And then I'm going to overkill him by another 12. Cool. How would you like to finish him? Uh, Mixo distracted this one real quick, so uh, I just uppercut it with a brick, and then when it's, like, staggered, I bring the brick back around and just smash its head into the ground. <laughs> Perfect. I just envision a brick would just be so savage, because, like, you're using it as a <laughs> melee weapon, so, like, your ro- I envision the rope is no more than, like, four feet, and you're just like... Yeah. Boom! So it's like not really. You're not really. It's just like here's the brick flailing. Boom! It definitely just, gives like pro wrestler vibes. Like here he comes with a steel chair. Oh <laughs> man, if I could get a steel chair, <laughs> man, I should ask for one of those. <laughs> Having had Roger in the party for this song. It's like proof that weapon is magical. It has survived itself destroying many things. That rope hasn't frayed. The brick hasn't crumbled. And then it is Gertie's turn. Gertie, you are within the tunnel. Two of the pigs have been slain and uh, you have no idea about what goes on. All you'd have to do is go through the tunnel and go to the room to see what's going on, but you know that Anthrax is is uh, in combat somewhere up there. Okay, she's gonna go through the tunnel stealthily and find the next victim then. Okay, you can see two two of these pig mutations are standing up on the table as uh, one of them's getting body blocked by Anthrax and the other one locks eyes with you. I want to get him. Okay, you run in to make it attacks. It squeals. It has, it has, <laughs> it has, it has not had an action yet, though. Oh, oh, even oh. Mm-hmm. get wrecked! That's a twenty-five to hit. That hits. And then that... chair. <laughs> Damn the chair! Where? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? One and nothing. Twelve. Okay. Plus. Is this considered surprised? No, because he used keen sense. Ah, there you go. Oh, that's right. They're pretty good for that. Makes complete sense. Big old snouts like that. Those. Okay. That is 25 points of damage. Still lives. Ooh. Didn't like that, though. And then a second attack. Mm-hmm. With a long sword. Kitty. Does 17 hit? 17 hits. Strike with the longsword. Okay. Dude, that's five points of damage. Total? The mutation Mom. still stands. Basically on death's door, though. Okay. Okay. First uh- Pardon? Yes. Sorry, muttering to myself, trying to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, and then I want to take my bonus action to hide. Uh, they, they've all, they've been able to smell you and see you. What a bitch. <laughs> uh, then in that case, I will stand my ground with uh, the body blocker. <laughs> Yeah, you got it. So it is their turn next because they got a twelve and a nine, and then Evan is last with the seven. So the one pig that you just struck is going to try to strike back with the cleaver. It is going to use two attacks at plus seven on you, Gertie. Oh, you, 
you ran in by yourself. That is an 18 plus 7, which is 25, and an 11 plus 7, mm -hmm. which is a 18. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, unrelated question. Did we get any temp HP for this fight? <laughs> we no, did not. No. Oh, okay, just checking. Yeah, that definitely hits. The first hit is a 3 and a 2 plus 4. So that is a total of 8 points. No, 9 points of damage. Nine. Yeah. And the second okay. hit is a 5 and a 3 plus 4, which makes 12. Uh, the second attack is a miss. No, no, no. Both of them hit. Those are the oh, damages. False. Those are the damages. Ah. Excellent. What was that last number then? A 5 plus 3 plus 4 is 12. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> What's your AC? Uh, 16. Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, you could uncanny dodge one of those, the 12. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, right, you do get that. So that's half. Mm hmm Down to I six. I forgot I had that, too. And it is here, Anthrax, that you are trying to body block, but the other one is going to run over to Gertie as well. You could take a swipe attack at it. All right. This it's actually pig, an electric attack. But, uh, this pig yeah. is fresh. <laughs> <sighs> plus four uh six plus four will a ten hit it runs past you with ease and goes and grabs a cleaver and makes two swipe attacks at gertie because <laughs> she is the only one who ran in that is a 12 plus seven which makes 19 and a 13 plus seven which is a dirty 20. Both of those hit. Okay, the first oh strike boy. is a two. Wait, here I go with dying again. How? A two and a two plus four. Eight points of damage. I'm switching the D10. <laughs> no! You have to stick with it. Like a peasant. Yeah, you can't be a quitter. Fine, be a man. The other two D10s. <laughs> so you took the first eight points of slashing damage. Yeah. Don't let the dice be the problem. Be your own problem. <laughs> <laughs> be a man. The next one is a six and a four plus four. Fourteen more points of damage. And I'm down. As the pig mutations hack and slash their way at Gertie, Anthrax, you witness the issue as you did not intervene. Next in the initiative is Evan. <laughs> I don't like that. I attempted. <laughs> I attempted to intervene, sir. All right. Well, having our cover blown, I'm obviously going to go ahead and just run in and see the two standing uh, pig mutations. Does one look more damaged than the other? Yes. One looks like it's on death's door, and the other one is fresh. All right. So I'm going to shoot the fresh one. Okay. With a firebolt for a 17 to hit. That hits. Right. That is for 13 fire damage. Okay, he still lives. And then I'm going to bonus action bullet shrimp the other one. You got it. Uh, that's an 18 to hit. 18 definitely hits. For six points of force damage. He had five hit points. Bullet ah. shrimp, finish him. Okay, so its ability, <laughs> as you may know, uh, is it pushes it five feet back. I like to believe it aimed for the head, and only the head moved five feet back. Oh, okay. <laughs> as the head severs and blasts off and like blows against <laughs> blows against the wall, the remaining body holding the cleaver falls on top of Gertie's body. Oh, I tried. <laughs> And then I will, uh, how close is Gertie? Am I able to get to her? 15 feet? You could use the rest of your movement, get in there? All right, well, I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get right next to it. And then try and get in between it and the other living fucking, uh, deal. <laughs> only okay. because, like, all it's gotta do is hit her and she could die. Okay. There's only one pig mutation left in the room. Top of the round, Gromit. Last one. The last one. Okay, I'm gonna go stabbing. You got it. 
Okay. Oh, so close. 19 plus 6. <laughs> yep. All right, rape here. Here You'll I go it. raping again. <laughs> I shouldn't have said it like that. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> and they come out well. They could have. They could have come out better. Yeah, but <laughs> we need subtitle, uh, subtitles. Subtitles for that moment. Uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Piercing damage. Okay, he still stands. Okay, and then I'll stab him with a knife. Then. <laughs> okay. Uh, eleven plus six. Oh 17. yeah. He okay. Squ- he squeals as he gets struck in the back the first time, but then comes the dagger. Yeah, it's probably not gonna be that much. Like T four, is it? Yeah. But... Here we go. Three, four, five, six damage. Six is right on the money. That's the number I have down. Yeah. Gromit, finish this pig mutation. <laughs> Stab him in the dick. No, um, I I guess I plunge the raper in, and then I just stab him with knife, and I keep going back and forth until he just falls over. You got it. As you just keep wiggling the blade in his neck before he kind of tra- like trances over and falls over to the ground. You guys, Dead, are- bitch. <laughs> you guys are out of initiative. All okay, right, I'm gonna run up. Uh, and use lay of hands on myself and Gertie. Okay, how much are you going to expend? Uh, I'm going to give Gertie 15 and myself 15. Is that all that you got left? Yep. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull my gloves off. Oh, my glove off. That's, that's all I have in lay on hands. Yes, I understand I can that. I also do... Healing hands. I'm gonna yep. heal Gertie. See, so you guys got the jump on the pig mutations last time. Yeah, this time. I'm gonna heal Gertie, Gertie for another uh, <laughs> ten. Okay. So Gertie, you get twenty-five hit points back. Bless you, my child. And then <laughs> I'm gonna burn my once per day. I pull off my glove, and then my spell rot tattoo that's on the back of my left hand. I'm just gonna, it's like, okay, see if this works. And it just like you see like the ink on it, kind of like Iron Man nanobot, like around some wounds. And you're <laughs> like, oh, this looks fancy and neat and whatever, and it looks super awesome. And then once it's done and it settles, it looks exactly as if I used duct tape. Like <laughs> it's, it's no different than as if I used duct tape. <laughs> To cast cure wounds. Okay. I'd like to cast flex seal. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that'd be for eleven hit points. <laughs> on who? On Gertie. So you gain a total of thirty six. Actually, back. hold on. Who who are at what? What was what were you at, Roger? I'm at thirty two. Or twenty five out of. I'm at twenty five out of twenty seven. Can't you, even gain that. And much. Roger, you're at what? Forty seven. <laughs> out of 64. <laughs> okay. Fucking shit. So, Gertie. Yes, sir. Uh, just stay back. Like, do not get to the front run. Do you have any ranged attacks? I have a crossbow. Okay. Do you mind if you use that? Because uh, I think resources spent would be better allocated. It's fair. Just to- Okay, yeah, give uh, Roger 11 hit points. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in the room, other than the two spent pigs, there is just a jumble of um, meat and severed parts of beings left on the table. Like I said, bones are, 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 are thrown about the room. There is the cleavers that are pelved right into the board here. And even the table itself is unrecognizable by its color because it is so stained with blood over the time that it's been used for. The only way from here is out to the east. 
as a continuing passageway and tunnel. Wonder what they were eating here. I wouldn't want to know. However, do you think there's anything valuable in this room that we should try and discover? Mm-hmm. It smells awful. Roger's going to try and pull one of these cleavers out of the table. You could get one out. You required one dirty cleaver. <laughs> <laughs> but can he wield it, though? So, it, I don't imagine that's no different than like a hand axe. Probably not super different. Uh, a great cleaver is 11 pounds. Ooh. Heavy, two handed. So these are big cleavers. How, I, I was thinking like meat cleaver. Yeah, but the mutations are pretty big. They're like, they're like almost seven feet tall. Like they're, they're big mutation creatures as well. And were they the ones doing the chopping? Yes. <laughs> oh, well, that explains it. They were made for these things. <laughs> kind of like, uh, you know, the Resident Evil tyrant weapons. <laughs> made it's like, why, why, who, who carries around something that big? Those things do. Made just for me. Um, It'd be considered a two-handed weapon. Are there shelves? Are there doors? Uh, no, there's a tunnel that leads to the east. There's a few, like, chains with skeletons hung from them that hang from the ceiling. Ooh. Nothing of nothing of value, as everything has probably been picked clean, as they no longer have skin, organs, or meat attached to them. I almost want to do the new, uh, the Isaac stomp on these fucking pigs. One of them's missing a <laughs> hat. <laughs> yeah. Screw this shit. These things are fucking gross. The whole place reeks. I can't tell if it's the living or the dead that stinks the worst. Uh, Oh, I I can't tell the difference if this is blood or fecal matter. And and honestly, it doesn't make a difference. Let's just go. It's gross. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty bad. You guys continue you east. Know that's me. <laughs> yeah, it's right, but... the only one. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of blood everywhere. That's not yeah. cool. I mean, whatever. Yeah. Seems like an issue. I don't know your guys' problems. This year, just sweet. <laughs> I love it. Okay. As you guys continued across the the winding tunnels okay. here you begin to hear a small, faint panting off in the distance. You come to a room that opens up. You can see that there's another tunnel to the north, but it's here that you can see that there's tons of shards of corium dropped around the room, and there is two rattlings in the middle of the room, both struck by swords in their chests, and one of them is turned over, still breathing, and the other is not moving. Huh. There is almost like a hundred little fragments of corium thrown about the room. Does it look like an explosion went off? No, what kind, kind of sword is stuck into the one rat? Like just like a dirty sword and blade. Like something they would wield, but that is it impaled to the ground essentially. No, they're impaled. One's impaled in one. One's impaled in the other. Oh, and they're on like uh, like stalagmites. No, they're just on the ground. The two of them are on the ground. One of them seems to be breathing, and one of them okay. seems to be not. Gotcha. With a light panting. Do we? Uh... Do we help it? How big are we kidding? I'm gonna pull a knife out. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Gromit. 
Okay. I mean, just let it let it to its own fate. I'm sure it got here on its own. Most of these two idiots killed each other. Yep. One time, I saw a deer. It actually had the head of a rival male still attached to its own antlers. Oh, you're dead. That kind of shit happens in the wild. It's best us not to interfere. I know they're sentient rat beans, but still. They're what barely you, sentient. What would you guys like to do? More like sentient um, crap beans. Mm. Do they have any pouches or anything that looks like they have any bags of anything? They both just kind of have like the same little rags that the, the rest of the ratlings usually have on. The so little, I'm hearing no the health cloaks. Potions. The little cloaks that they have on. They don't magically have any health potions then. Then yes, they're worthless to me. Um, I will actually, you know what, I'll get to the one that's breathing a little bit. Can you speak? <sighs> I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Bring life. Call death. I'm sorry. Uh, Kelly, I can't. That sounds like a lot of wind. Okay, sorry. Sounds like a dragon. Bring life. Okay. Call death. Soil. Call death. The, soil the ground. Bring the Lord of Hunger. Oh, right. These idiots are killing each other for the Lord of Hunger. That's mad. Madness. You're dumb. Oh, that dumb, that dumb rat. Yeah. No reason, dumb. It doesn't have much longer to left left to live. <laughs> Let it savor these last moments. Yes, yes. Be a reminder that it brought itself here. I remember the sweet taste that the poor grung would taste like. Not again. Oh my god. Hey Gromit, do you want to eat him? <laughs> no, eat but him. I'll kill him. Gromit, would you eat? A rat lately? A rat guy? No. Like that? Oh. No. Okay. I didn't know I had well, to. Well, I'm glad you're going to kill him, Gromit, because if uh, you weren't, I was going to have to. Well, you can if you want. We're not that. We're not that bad if you could just get around all the fur. Well, you're pretty horrible. Look, uh, every single one of you rats that we've ever met has tried to eat Gromit, so... Yeah, we yeah. are. You guys really are that bad. But I just waste for death. It comes for me. Yeah. I mean... Eh. This was final duty. So, uh, which direction is, uh, big boy, daddy? The guy who mm. owns this place. <laughs> you see, like, he's fading out of consciousness. He's like, what? Slap, slap, what? slap. Hey, 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 focus, <laughs> focus. Hey. He's like, what? Daddy, what? The guy who owns this place. Oh, yes, yes. Big Papa, you know, Doofenshmirtz or whatever. You see, that guy. Got, he's got, like, one hand holding the blade that's, like, sunk through his chest. And the hands you know, Dick Munch. <laughs> and then he what? What? Name of whom? No, 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 no. <laughs> Where is the guy who owns this place? Your stupid leader or whatever. Victor Grimwatch. Victor Grimwatch. Where is he? Uh, Evan just stands up. He said whom? I'm actually kind of proud of him. We not uh, need to know. Where master always be? Yeah. Last I'm, I'm... last order known was to summon. <sighs> yes, yes. As his head flops to the ground. Well, it was a waste of fucking time. 
Dude, so I cast dead. Speak with Dead. As you say <laughs> it's a waste Why? of time. <laughs> As you say that it's a waste of time, the earth begins to shake and the corium rocks on the ground begin to to like sputter around. Even the cavern walls Ooh. begin to just like shake even more oh, of the God. dirt off the side. I don't want to die in a cave like this. I don't I hope to think that's a cave in. You begin mm-hmm. to hear like almost like an earthquake, an amount of like rustling dirt being moved quickly. No. Should we move? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Continue on east. Does anyone want to take this rat's head? Oh, you Just in case for later. It goes no. now no. it goes no. northwest <laughs> to take the head for later. Uh the head goes north the the path ahead goes northwest now. <laughs> the head goes northwest <laughs> with us. What does? You said the head goes northwest. The path. <laughs> Did I say the head? Like you started and then you stopped. <laughs> and then you said ahead. Uh, oh, okay. The path anyway. ahead goes <laughs> northwest. You guys have essentially gone on this side of the pathway so far. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Perfect. I saw a big out sign. Perfect. What could that mean? Yeah. I told you guys east was beast. Like a maze, you just stick to put keep your right hand on the wall at all times. Mm-hmm. So you guys are going that way? I'm following along with those guys. You got Heading it. Where they head. <laughs> So as you guys go into the next room, there's uh, three other directions that it goes to. It goes northwest, northeast, and southwest. You can see that there's this area is just a large, like uh, a a large area of dirt. There's no creatures. There's no signs of footsteps or anything. The dirt here is all clean, but you can feel that there's a a bit of cold wind comes from the northeast um pathway mm-hmm. but along with that is the large rumbling that happens behind you guys you guys hear the ripping sounds of a new tunnel that's been created you guys look back to the passageway you just came from and you can see the vibrant green and purple corium sticking out of the lord of hunger as he smashes his his big claws and rendering fingers down into the two rattlings grabs them and eats them Oh god, big dumb rat, big dumb rat, run, run, run! <laughs> big bum rat, big bum rat! <laughs> sure. Stroke much? He, he, slams so his, he slams his clawed fingers back into the ground and sees through the tunnel at your guys' oh, like vibrating light. Um, yeah, uh, oh god, uh, we need to move. I don't know if we can take that thing on. Yep, time to run. I don't want to find out. Right. Nope. I kind of want to find out. I kind of want a dead too, but it's... Yeah, no. We've, we've been running yeah, for a no. while. What would you guys like to do? So, what's ahead of us, exactly? It It's all level ground. And it's just like a large room to the northwest. There's a tunnel to the northeast. You can feel a cold breeze to the south. West is a dark tunnel and the south east is where you just came from. Well, pick a direction, guys. Yeah, you can feel a cold wind coming from the northeast. Dark tunnels northwest, but it is all like a clean non walked on floor as the rampaging rat, the Lord of Hunger begins coming through the tunnel. If we're trying to escape, we should go towards the wind. Whoa, pardon me? Wow, she sounded really far away. That being said, she I think said, she said towards the wind. She said if we're yeah. trying to if escape, trying we, should to escape we should head towards the wind. Okay, so are you guys going to like run there and dash there? Roger the is yeah. going to let them pass ahead of him, and he's going to lead up the rear. Okay. Uh, brick at the ready. You got it. Papa Thrax. Would be I, I will him. take the lead then. 
Okay. Are you guys going to, like, rush your way through to try to, like, get out that tunnel? Uh, yeah, because uh, if the rats try us, like, if we just can outrun them, then the Lord of Hunger will get to them. <laughs> okay. So as you guys begin to run into the center of the room, you guys see out of that northwest tunnel, two rattling mutations and a pig one begins to come out of the tunnel into the room. You can see that the south east, no, the southwest one, you can see that there's two rattling mutations and one pig there as well begins to come out of there. As you guys go across the flat leveled ground, the, the ground starts to give way. I Son need, of a bitch. I need deck saving throws from everybody. I could do that. Except for Roger, who stood back. Are they within 10 feet of me? Uh, they ran into the room, and you stood back at the tunnel. I thought he was just hold, holding, uh, following in the rear. Yeah, I, I, I was going to be following along with them, okay. just at the back of the party. Okay, sure. You, like, uh, between, the, between them and the Lord of Hunger. You are also falling into the pit as well, then. Okay. That's fine. I rolled okay. an eight. Everybody gets a plus three to the mm. save. I rolled an 11. I, I rolled an 18. 18. 19, 14, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, total with the, the plus three. 14 for me. 14 for I got like a, a 27. <laughs> oh my god. 18 plus six plus the three. <laughs> what Roger and Mixo get? Roger got an 18 total. Mixo got a 14 total. Okay, and Gertie? Or, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I take that back. Roger got an 18 total as well. 13 plus 2 plus 5. I got Roger at 18 here. You said Mixo was 14? 18. Okay, both 18. And what Gertie get? The... Gertie got a nat 20. Okay, because the, the DC here was 15. Oh, no. As the 20-foot pit gives way. No! As Evan and Todd are the only ones who fall down and into it, you guys find yourselves at the edging rim on the outside as the stampeding rat of the Lord of Hunger makes his way into the tunnel. How deep is this pit? 20 feet. And I'm hanging With on the edge? 20. No, if you failed, you are in the pit now. Oh. Did I fall 20 From feet, or did I six? just, like, now I'm 20 I feet lower? Can I any of them? She take when You'll be 20 you... feet lower into the room, so I'll draw a... Okay. A crummy picture. Could I? Okay. I'll wait for the crummy picture to decide what I want to do. Okay. So, Gertie, uh, Gromit, Roger, and Mixo. So then there's a rattling mutation, a rattling mutation, pig, and a rattling mutation, rattling mutation, and a pig. And I will just send it on Discord. Your Discord. I will be nice. And it is 20 feet deep. <clears throat> oh, God. So as these things are approaching you guys, I think everybody should roll for initiative based on what your actions can be during a moment like this. As as it's kind of like the ground kind of gives way, and you guys like just kind of like fall against the the, the cliff side of it, falling into the pit. You guys aren't going to okay. take any damage falling in, but it's more like you're just falling in. Are we prone? One, two, three. Give me another deck save. 
same DC. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm prone. Cool. Ooh. Okay. Bad rolls now. Pink. So he's the five, six, four, three, two, and one. And then the Lord of Hunger. Fifteen. I will have to roll all of these guys here. So they all get plus three. So that is a 10. Eight. And the Lord of Hunger's roll, who has a, only has a plus three. Okay. So let's get Gromit. Initiative. Pardon me? 24. Oh, 24. 24. <laughs> okay, Evan? Uh, 22. I actually rolled a nat 20. Okay. Todd? Initiative is... 9 plus 6, 15. Roger? 8. Mikso? <laughs> uh, 17. And Gertie? 21. Okay. So, um, top of the round, Evan, do you have a plus three to death? Two. Okay. The rattling mutation gets to go first. Rattling mutation, which is number four. Number four is going to jump 20 feet into the pit. He's going to take 2d10 fall damage, or 1d10 fall damage. No, it's a 1d6 fall damage, isn't it? Yeah. He takes five points of damage, dropping down into the pit. He sees Todd and Evan there, and he's going to rush in. And we're going to see who he attacks. One through three is Evan. Four through six is Todd. Six. Todd, you're going to get struck twice by a rattling mutation. Okay. If you guys remember, these guys are the ones with the claws that deal the radiant burst. Mm-hmm. So his attacks are a nat 20 and an 18 plus 7, which is a 25. Holy shit. Uh, both hit. <laughs> okay. I'll do the first one, which is the radiant attack. This will just be the regular hit. So it's 2d6, which is a 6 and a 2. That's an 8 plus 4 for the radiant damage, which is 14. No, which is 12. 12. You take... 12 points of slashing damage on the first hit. And then the mm -hmm. second hit is the nat 20, which is only 2d6 plus 2d6. 5 and 1 is 6. 4 and 3 is 7. So 13 more points 13. of damage. Uh, yeah, I'm not looking very good, you guys. <laughs> and it just started. Uh, next in the initiative is your turn. Oh no, Gromit was very first with a 24. My apologies. Yeah. Um, 20 feet down. Yeah. Oh, what can I do? Uh, you jumped down, but I don't want to. <laughs> Do I have any rope? I don't know if I do. You have rope in your inventory? Be useful. Yeah. I'll just yell, grab it. I can get out. Don't worry about that. I have a grappling hook, don't I? You do. <laughs> and I think Todd yeah. can too. Can you? Oh, I think Todd has a certain thing that can get him out of there, right? <coughs> um, yeah. You didn't use it today, did you? A spell Not called today. Rounds with... Yeah, I know. Frisky. Frisky maps. wept. Frisky wept. 
Okay. First speed. First speed tendies. Yeah. First speed tips. <laughs> All right. First speed tendies. You guys can don't need my help. Then fine. Uh, kill. I'll, I need you kill. to help to kill. Kill. Okay. I'm gonna. Your blade can kill. Oh, I'm not bleeding down there. <laughs> I'll shoot him with my crossbow. You got it. What would you like to shoot the the rattling mutation down there? Yeah, you got it. You don't want to shoot the Lord of Hunger in the tunnel. You got it. What? What was you gonna? <laughs> no problem. I don't. Those are the ones that are attacking my friends at the moment. That's true. <laughs> uh, six plus six, twelve. Twelve to hit. Yeah, that does not strike him. Oh shit! <laughs> For my next trick, I'm gonna disappear into the dirt. <laughs> Are you gonna run into the cold wind tunnel? I might wait there. Yeah. Okay. You got just it. so I'm out of sight in case anything else comes up. So. You got it. Okay. Next in the initiative after that would be Evan. You were down there in the tunnel, and this one rattling mutation's on Todd. How close is it to me currently? Very close. You guys are very close to each other. Five, ten so feet. Like, and now that's a big difference. Is it five or ten feet? I'll give you. I'll give you the distance at ten feet. Okay. But the it's on Todd. Is if I'm within five feet, then it's disadvantage my attacks. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, shoot this thing square in the face. You got it. Kind of like, uh, <coughs> dang it, I highly doubt the 13 hits. A 13 does not strike a rattling mutation. Stop struggling so hard. <laughs> yes, yes. Go ahead. Feeding. Okay, so I also miss with my bullet shrimp. Very good. And, uh, yeah. I spend the rest of my whatever I can do in six seconds adjusting my sights to see if the fall maybe fucked it up or something because clearly I don't know what's going on right now. But you're staying in the pit? Yeah, because it's my bonus action to fire my shrimp. Mm -hmm. It's also my bonus action to use uh, Misty Step. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Gertie. I it... just tried to save uh, <laughs> Todd, Todd. Todd. Gertie, it would be your turn. Dirty. Dirty. Dirty, dirty. Dirty, dirty. So, interacting with an object, okay, is there any way that I can assist them getting out of the hole by casting down a rope to them? Yeah, you could, you, you could do that, for sure. Okay. We, we can I do that and shoot a crossbow? Do they have the we have a way down. I mean, we have a way out already, so don't worry about yeah, the, the They rope. said they have spells to get out. It's just... They don't want to they're going to take... They, they want to take the spell route, I guess. They're also trying to fight. <laughs> they're also trying to fight. Okay. <laughs> Look, I'm not, I'm not looking for a fight anymore, okay? <laughs> okay. I'm at 2 HP, alright? So, uh... You got it. Make a shot. You also get your assassin. Actually, no, because it's already gone. It's already gone. So, okay. Take a shot. We can use the ones. <laughs> Surprise, D's Did you say 24? Okay. Yeah. Yep, that is. Yep, that definitely is. Okay. Uh, that's a six plus three, that's nine points of damage. You got it. The arrow strikes into the shoulder as it continues pressing on its attack. I assume that count for sneak attack damage. Uh, no, you won't get the sneak attack damage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, broke down there anyway, and just 
to see if that will help instead of them using some blocks. Did you say you're going to jump down? No, God, no. Oh. Cast a rope down. Oh, yeah, you can just uh, cast your rope down and uh, you hold on to it with one hand as you hold your crossbow with the other one, just hoping that they do the, the smart thing. And after... Okay. That'll be it for me. Okay. After Gertie's turn, 21, Rattling Mutation 1. This one is going to run around the top side and is going to go meet Gertie and is going to go make two claw attacks against her. Plus seven to hit on each. One is a 16 plus seven. The other one's a 17 plus seven. I imagine both of those hit. One's going to be a D6, 2D6 plus a D8 of Radiant. So a four and a three, seven plus five is 12 damage. And two other D6s is a five and a seven for seven, or five and a two for seven. So 12 plus seven is 19 points of slashing damage to you, Gertie. After its turn. You said that's a total of 19 points of slashing damage? Yes. Okay. This doesn't seem busting at all. In fact, I'm fairly certain it's pretty cap. For real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> just as you say Am that... Am I cool yet? <laughs> just as you say that, it is the Lord of Hunger's turn. Wait, it gets to go? That's not fair. It has a 45-foot movement speed. Chasing us. It is, yeah. <laughs> it is going to come out of the tunnels, leap down into the pit... Oh boy! Yeah, I told you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you guys danger. Just... <laughs> and it is going to use its psionic scream ability. So anybody within thirty feet needs to make me a con save for. A... I drop. <laughs> you what? <laughs> I drop. It doesn't do damage. Look. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> it uses psionic scream, a con save of DC eighteen. Or you become feared. Well, uh, that's Mixo perfectly fine. Is, is not feared. Um, Roger's afraid, though. Okay. One sec. Con save. Con save Perfect. DC eighteen from Psionic Scream. Oh, that bounced out. Come on, <laughs> seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have become feared by the Lord of Hunger. How about Evan? Uh, he's afraid of shit. <laughs> okay. And I imagine... Have Gertie... you ever been so terrified that you didn't shit yourself? Just just clenched up that bad. Being so give me a sec. Okay. <laughs> Okay, con save, plus four. Uh, 12 plus four, 16. Sweet. You, you are feared. So I am I am the exact emotion that I should be feeling at this moment, yes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> As if, like, Roger was just like, yeah, man, let's just fight this thing. <laughs> like, it'll be cool. 30 got a 19, or excuse me, 18. 18 just makes it. You are not feared uh, by the Lord of Hunger. Todd's like screaming like a little girl. <laughs> just just absolutely bloodied, battered, and just screaming like a little girl. <laughs> Everything's been fine until now. I'm gonna go out exactly the way I came in, screaming and bloody. <laughs> After its turn, uh Mixo. I was so afraid screaming and naked. <laughs> Mixo, I'm not up. naked yet. <laughs> Mixo, you're up. Okay. Uh, Mixo is not afraid. No, he's not. <laughs> not Everybody afraid. else is. I want to see what's gonna happen. I'm gonna cast Reduce on the Lord of Hunger. Okay, what kind of save is that? He needs to make a. 
Con saving throw. That's weird. A uh, con saving throw. DC 15. Okay, he has a plus 11 to this. So you're telling me there's a chance. I am telling you there's a chance. So, you can see I already had it written before. There's a plus 11 there. Yep. I'm not lying. So he needs a, what, a 4 and lower? A 3 and lower. Yeah. 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 Rain lower. That's a There's 14. There's a chance. That's a 14. Yeah. Wasn't a big I'm, chance. <laughs> He's tanky. I, I just, I thought it was a charisma save when I said it. Oh, okay. That's fine. That I just burnt the spell. That would have no been reason. way better. That's only a plus two. Like you'd figure a spell that alters the physical being of a creature you would. Think be. It sounds like like a charisma save, you know. Uh, yeah. Is there anything you'd like to do to try to save any of your friends? I can't really stretch down there and grab them. Oh, don't worry. Next turn, if I survive, I am out of the hole and I am <coughs> running. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know what? I'm just gonna call for a hasty retreat and be like, everyone, we can't take it on in such tight quarters in here. Run for your fucking life! <laughs> Run away! Todd just continues screaming <laughs> incoherently. The, uh, the, the icy, icy The corridor. cold wind tunnel? The cold wind tunnel. Alright, Mixo just like runs away. And he's not even the frayed one. You got it, and luckily, luckily, it is Todd's turn. And Todd, having a slightly regained composure, but not really, is just going to uh, use his free once a day uh, the, uh, Missy Step uh, in the direction of uh, Roger and fuck off. Okay, you Misty Step just out of the 20 foot hole. Yep, just a 30-foot misty step, and then <laughs> fucking <laughs> 30 more feet of just booking and screaming. <laughs> okay, you see that uh, Todd matches the speed of uh, the speed of Mixo here, and Gromit. oh wait, I have a, I I, I still have an action action. You do I'm yeah? Gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna just <laughs> fire off a shot <laughs> right behind me as I run. At who? Uh, mm, Lord of Hunger. You got it. Make me an attack. It's a plus seven to hit. Put a dent in this thing. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna try. Uh, sixteen plus seven. Sweet. That hits. Uh, two d tens. Where's my d ten? There's my d ten. And there's my other ten. <laughs> Come on, roll high, roll high. The gopher. Uh, or is it a beaver? Eight and a six. The gopher. So that would be 14. For two damage? 14. Oh, 14, okay. Yay. Yeah. 14 damage as I just <laughs> fire off a random one into its flank or whatever. I'm just like, yeah. Okay. Next in the initiative here, after Todd and after Mixo, <laughs> is a rattling mutation number two. He is going to jump down in the pit after Todd. After me? Yep. There's nobody else in the pit. You're the closest thing in the pit. Wait, didn't they didn't get scared too? So a rattling, running. A rattling Wait, mutation. Do, are they, do they suffer the psionic scream? Yeah. No, they're part of the they're part of its language. So we need to understand its language. Okay, time to learn rat boys. <laughs> <laughs> rat roda. <laughs> uh so Evan, it's gonna take two swipes at you with a plus seven. One is an eleven plus seven, and one is a fourteen plus seven, so an eighteen and a 21? I'm going to reaction cast shield 
and only take one of those. You got it. So it's a five, a three, and an eight. That is a total of 16 points of damage you take from one slash Oof. of a rattling mutation. Okay, and then from there, it is one of the pigs who can't reach all the way. Wait, did it take any damage from falling in the pit? Yeah, it took two points of damage jumping down. Perfect. I, I hate that. that bastard. I rolled that. I hope it rolled its ankle. <laughs> uh, it does need a doctor. Um, the pig mutation is going to jump down where there's not too much... Uh, room left. He's going to take six points of damage and fuck his ankle right up. But he is going to use the defiant scream. The only one who's in the area to hear it is Evan. You need to make me a DC 13 con saving throw from being still in the pit. Uh, boom, pass. That's a uh, 16. You got it. So that is that pig mutation's turn. And then it is the other rattling mutation's turn who is going to run around the east side of over here. So they're going to try to chase you out of the tunnel. They've made it about to the eastern southern tunnel, this rattling mutation. And this other pig one is going to follow the rattling mutation. Because there's quite say, a few of them now in the room. Say, say, say southern again. Say it. Do it for me. Say, say southern again. Top of the round. <laughs> I don't know. This <laughs> he said it like southern. South. <laughs> Is Gromit? Gromit, you're making your way hightailing it out of the tunnel, but Todd has run past you, sending a firebolt. Oh uh, boy. <laughs> Even, these guys have been eaten by rat, eaten by rats at level. What are you all? Level six or seven? Six. six. Uh, oh, uh, I thought we were at 12. Let me write that down. <laughs> okay. Is if there you kill my Lord of Hunger in one-on-one -on -one combat, I will give you is there? Is there anyone I can shoot quickly? Just sure. By, like... You can just turn around and shoot. There's tons of them in the pit. There's one that like is taller than the pit, actually. Maybe I might as well take a pot shot at the Lord of Hunger. You um, got it. I shoot the Lord of Hungry. Oh lord, he hungry. Nom 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 nom. Uh, 40, 56, 90, 90, 30, 20. That hits. Okay. And no, he's not by himself, is it? Nope. But would this be considered a sneak attack? Because I did hide. No, you ran. I said I hit at the entrance. Sure, sure. Give me give me this damage. Sure. Told you. I, I didn't run. I'm, I'm going to start running now. Just just <laughs> tickle him for me. Just... Right. Exactly. Nine, <laughs> ten. Tickle him. Fourteen, fifteen. Sixteen piercing damage. Cool. And then might as well do that DC 12. He's immune to poison. So why? <laughs> why is it being a poisonous animal? If all your fucking animal creatures are... Okay. <laughs> They're all out to eat frogs. They yeah. evolved to get away from your kind, okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, then after that, I'm going to run through the... <laughs> Just pool. They keep running. Yeah. <laughs> And then I and then I follow follow suit and follow and run out. After Gromit, it was a rattling mutation, the one that's down there in the pit, and then it's Evan's turn. So Evan, you're down there with a rattling mutation that was striking Todd. It is gonna turn to do its two swipe attacks on you. Okay. I may be dead. That is a three plus seven. Miss. Ten. And the second attack. Is plus seven and is also a seven for 14. That's a miss. The oh, two, I have my shield up still. The two swipes miss. As Evan, your shield goes down and it is your turn. There is 
two uh, there's two rattling mutations, a pig, and the Lord of Hunger all within the pit here. And you. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, as I'm in the the most deadliest mosh pit Evan ever imagined himself being in, uh, he has so much fear racking through him that he just gets like that brief moment of clarity and he's like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm out. <laughs> and presses the misty step button. Okay. And just like... <laughs> nah, fuck this. <laughs> and uh, I begin to run the fuck <laughs> with my friends. Uh, that's my bonus action. Uh, action. I, as well, will also just, you know, take my shot at fucking Lord Hunger. You got it. Uh, 17 to, uh, plus 9, so that's a hit. Yeah, that definitely hits. 26. Uh, that'll be for... Uh, 12 points of fire damage. You got it. You also itched its belly. And that's my goal. I, I survived. Okay, so Todd, Todd and Evan have run out. Gromit has run out. Mixo's run out. Roger's still back. Gertie's still back. Next in the initiative after Evan is Gertie. And Gertie's gonna dash, dash, dash. <laughs> are they still in the hole? They got. They both got out of the hole, and they are. They hightailed it past you, actually. Oh great! Let's yeet out of it then. <laughs> okay, you're gonna go down the the cold wind hallway as well. Hello. You got it. <laughs> okay. Next initiative after Gertie then would come to the Lord of Hunger who there's only there's only Roger left on the cliff side of the actual um the actual ring there. The Lord of Hunger is actually going to make uh, its full-out assault on you. Oh, fuck. What, Roger just doesn't get a turn? Yeah. Roger has an 8. Oh, he's at the very end. So after yeah. all that, Okay. <laughs> I, oh. I'm, I didn't see the 8 at the bottom there. Yeah. So, Roger, he's just before, last. before the Lord of Hunger, what would you like to do? So, Roger sees all of his friends get away from this crazy, rabid fucking animal. And he's seen this thing before. Mm -hmm. And he knows the kind of de devastation it can cause. So he's going to cast Sanctuary on himself. Okay. And run. Where? Out the uh, the cold hallway. Oh, the cold wind hallway. He could have been a man and died. He's gonna bring up the rear with sanctuary you and got the it. dodge action. As it comes to the <laughs> as it comes to the Lord of Hunger's turn, all you can hear is the screeching sounds of the rattlings as the footsteps try to catch up to you guys of the smaller rattlings. You guys run and keep going until finally it breaks the tunnel leads to some outside forest among the cliffside you can you can feel the cold wind breeze against you guys it is like it's some unknown part of the forest that you guys are in but throughout the break of the trees down below at vox hollow you can see that there's a lit fire in the center of town up above into the sky, you can see that the moon flashes purple and green amongst like the rest of it. It almost emanates a wave. That's oh. weird. It didn't used to do that, did it? Uh, definitely not. I know it's only been a little bit since we've been like to the service, but what has happened since we've been gone? Well, and why have we been gone? That's where we'll end the session. Mm -hmm.